Welcome everyone to another episode of Tech Talk. I am Seth Saroop. Hello, uh, I'm Manimanan Sadasivan. And my name is Robert Wolf. And for this particular video, we are going to be talking to you about LibMRAA. And for those of you who aren't familiar with LibMRAA, this is the library that the 96 Sports team has chosen to standardize across our 96 Sports Consumer Edition boards. Lucky we have Mani on the call here. So, I mean, uh, I, I thought it would be good if we talked about um, generally, what is LibMRAA? Okay, so MRA, Lib, LibMRA or MRA is a low-level uh, skeleton library for Linux-based platforms. So it is meant to uh, make the peripheral access on the Linux-based systems more easier to the user space. So when we're looking at LibMRAA, this is a library, um, what what type of operating system are you running when you're using this library? So um, it's be, it's actually supported for only Linux and uh, but the architectures are different. So for instance, it is being supported on x86, ARM, MIPS, and even FPGA. So but it's only on Linux based platforms. Okay, and when I'm using libmraa. Um, say I want to code in C or Python. I mean, what languages uh, are enabled for this library? You know, is there any sort of, um, of restrictions? Um, so currently uh, the underlevel library, so the underlevel code is written in C, but uh, there are some bindings available in C++, Python, Java, and uh, even Node.js. So there are many uh, languages supported, but for all those languages, the underlying code is written in C. Nice. Um, yeah, so I, I've heard people kind of compare this library to um, what would be used on the Raspberry Pi, kind of like, you know, the, the RPI library. Um, could you give us kind of a comparison between the two or how might one be used over the other uh, or comparing use of the RPI library on the Raspberry Pi to the LibMRAA library on one of the 96 words consumer boards? Yep, sure. So uh, first thing is that MRA is not uh, tied to a specific platform. So that's one of the best thing to it. So for instance, uh, I said it support different architectures like x86, ARM and all. So even for even in ARM platforms, we have different kind of boards supported for this library. Say for instance, we have Raspberry Pi, Banana Pi and even 96 boards. So we have plenty of board supports enabled for this library. But when you compare RPI, so it's only enabled for Raspberry Pi. You can't use that library for, on any other board without doing much of the um, base groundwork. But for this library, porting is very simple. So that's one of the uh, reason there are a lot of board support added for this library. And it's more flexible to use when compared to RPI. And uh, one more thing about MRA is that, so with the help of this library, we can actually use one more library called libupm which we'll be talking in on other video. So um, which will be used for interfacing sensors, actuators and all. So I would say MRA is the flexible library to go to use when compared to RPI library. Awesome. Hey, Zaj, did you have anything? You're muted. <laughs> we can always cut that out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So, uh, Mani, you are just saying that uh, the library itself is fairly portable. What about the code that we write? Can I take a code that I've written for, say, a dragon board and run it on uh, the Raspberry Pi? How much uh, transition would be, or change would be needed to the code itself? Yeah, so I said uh, the MRA is a generic library. So the application you are writing, it's not tied to a specific platform. So, but one, the only thing you have to change is that the specific pin number. For instance, um, so the MRA library usually takes care of the uh, GPIO uh, generic names. I mean, uh, so for instance, uh, on 96 boards platform, all of our GPIO uh, naming are um, common for all 96 boards, but it need not be same on uh, say Banana Pi or Raspberry Pi. For instance, GPIO A on um, 96 boards platform is tied to GPIO number 23, but it need not be same on uh, other platform. So that's the only thing you have to change when you are porting your application code to another platform. 
but the rest of the things you can use it as it is yeah so i, I think um i think what you meant to say was that it's tied to the pin number 23 because um each each board at least you know some of the different ce boards on 96 boards um have different gpio values so like if you're looking at pin or if you're looking at gpio a which is pin 23 um the gpio value can change based on your soc but um as long as you plug in you know 23 for your uh for your export for your setting your values and setting your directions and everything then um then it will work across the 96 words platforms right and then Raspberry Pi, the pin for that particular GPIO just might be slightly different. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you need to change the GPIO number. Also, uh, when you go for other peripherals like I square C or SPI, you need to take care of the number also, I mean the bus number also. So uh, if you are using I square C1 on um, uh, 96 boards platform, it doesn't mean that the same I square C1 is enabled on Raspberry Pi. So that's the only thing you got to change. Awesome. Well, so we're going to include links to the libmraa library in the description below. We'll also include links to the 96 boards MRAA documentation. There are some examples that Mani has written in those uh, in those documentation sets for you to utilize the libmraa library with some of our 96 boards. And of course, if we uh, do end up and when we do end up pushing out more videos about MRAA and the other mysterious lib UPM library, you will also get links to those as well. So thank you. Awesome.